On the whole, few kids are active enough. Video games and television increasingly keep kids from going outdoors. One quarter of all U.S. children watch TV for four hours each day. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, only 13% of Southeast Michigan youth are getting one hour of daily physical activity. 50% of kids in Southeast Michigan get two or less days of physical education at school each week. 13% get zero. No one can argue that these statistics are scary. In 2015, the Aspen Institute identified eight strategies or gameplays that could get and keep all kids active through sport, regardless of zip code or ability. Leveraging these eight strategies, the State of Play report provided key findings from around Southeast Michigan related to each play and the resulting letter grade for how we're doing for our kids. As part of the report, a survey asked more than 150 youth sport providers in the region how well do they think adults are doing in getting kids active through sports. The average grade was C+. Bottom line, we can do better. Our working group of Leadership Detroit XL classmates reviewed the report and narrowed this focus to gameplay number two, reintroduce free play. Experts recognize the need to reintroduce free play where possible. According to sports psychologist Jean Cote, to promote lifelong, intrinsically motivated sports participation, it is imperative to build a foundation during childhood and including high amounts of deliberate play activities early in development provides that motivational foundation. Thus, our goal became gaining a better understanding how communities outside of Detroit have found simple ways to get kids to just play and determine if it could be applied within the city of Detroit. Through the report, we learned Port Huron has turned to free play as a strategy to increase park usage on a limited budget. The city placed bins at four city parks and filled them with balls. The ball bin ideal is very simple. There are no rules. Kids are encouraged to play as often as they like for as long as they like. There are no check-ins or outs with the recreation department. Each bin declares, have fun and play, but the equipment is meant to stay. Please think of others and return equipment to the city's recreation department has reported an increase in the number of children coming to the parks as a result. The team met with Port Huron Recreation Director Nancy Windsor, who created the program to learn of possible pitfalls and voices of resistance. From being durability to ensuring balls were always inflated, most of the challenges that Port Huron has experienced are technical in nature. The team also interviewed Kim Kozlowski, the founder of Detroit Little Libraries, a local chapter of the National Free Little Library Movement, which has placed little libraries through the city of Detroit, including placement of a little library at every public school in Detroit in 2016. The little library concept is very similar to Port Huron's ball bin program. Kim was very honest in sharing that her program does not come with a sustainability plan. Her goal, Get libraries to people who are willing to sustain them on their own. An adaptive challenge Kim noted was related to equipment sustainability. The boxes in the front yards around Detroit are generally always full and the individuals take ownership over keeping them full. People with books at home almost always have books to donate. Is it the same with balls and sports equipment? She challenged us to identify who has sports equipment and convince them to regularly donate. Are there organizations that buy new equipment every year that could donate the used ones that are still perfectly good for this purpose? Armed with the report and the information for both interviews, the team identified a series of technical challenges, adaptive challenges, and possible voices of resistance. Our conclusion, in order to successfully implement this program, all of these areas must be addressed together versus alone. They are intricately woven together and influence each other. The need for an effective communications campaign is at the center. The right messages delivered to the right audiences through the right channels is key to technical and adaptive success. We know access to equipment at the parks encourages free play. Now we need to get the bins to get the kids there.